Hi, I'm Casey. Welcome to my channel. Today, I'm going to be showing you my skincare routine. But at the moment, I'm not real happy about it. I'm kind of mad at Nadia for even suggesting this because I think it's going to be so much more work than anybody's going to care to listen to. <laughs> um, and I think I'm going to end up feeling silly. And it's going to seem obnoxious because these are my products. However, I'm going to say, I'm going to say so many things. One, this was not how many products I used before COVID and I started getting subscription boxes. A lot of this is stuff that I am using because I want to try out new products because they come in my subscription boxes and I find a way to work them into my existing program. I also, before I begin, want to say this in no way is what I think other people should do. <laughs> this is just what I've been doing. So that's all I'm going to be telling you about. I wouldn't tell other people what they should do for their skin unless I have looked at their skin and had deep conversations with them about what you're currently using, what kind of medications you're on, how much water you drink, how your skin feels when you wake up in the morning, what it feels like at 2 a.m., how your makeup looks at 2 p.m., not a.m. Anyway, you get the idea. So I really considered lying to you <laughs> and just pretending my routine was what it was pre-COVID with like just the amount of products that I used to use. But of course, I don't know how to lie and I usually have to tell every single thing I know. So here we go. I guess I'll just start with what I do in the morning. So. For starters, I don't cleanse my skin in the morning when I wake up. Again, it might not work for everybody. It totally works for me. I feel like it would do, it would make more problems for my skin to add an extra cleansing, an extra water, an extra all that messing with my pH to start the morning with a cleanse when my skin was clean when I went to bed. All I did was sleep. Some natural oils, you know, maybe occurred. That's not worthy of a cleanse step for my skin, in my opinion. So I don't cleanse. I go right in with either a toner or those exfoliating detox pads. So right now it's this toner, but I also don't feel like the toner is all that important. I switched this with whatever company now is sending me um, things. I used um, Aveda um, Toning and Firming Spray for, I don't know, a dozen years. Um, I'm saying I'm a lot. You get the idea. Toner or some of these kind of detox um, pads. Mostly I make that distinction based on what my nighttime moisturizer was and if my skin feels like it still has some of that that hasn't completely synced in or if I feel like that has left me too thickly coated, then I'll use this so that I feel like I'm wiping a little bit more of that stuff away. Um, if I don't, if I feel like everything is, you know, sunk completely into my skin, then I just do the, you know, splashing of the, and I pat that toner in with my hands after being split in here and do a little massage, you know, with that. Now, some days if I'm feeling especially motivated, I'll do some with my stone. Just because I do feel like massage is good and healthy to get things flowing and circulation going um, and lymph flowing. And in the mornings, I can be puffy under my eyes. Um, so, I'll do some of that. Then, after toning or detox pads, I use my peptides, which I feel like is probably the only super important part of my skincare steps that I don't want to miss out on, um, that I mostly do feel like anybody would benefit from. Um, my peptides, so they're from this brand, Victoria Diam. It's with a K. Um, these peptides, they're in, you know, like a serum -y base, but they, peptides are 
send your brain messages to start doing a certain thing that they it used to do, but as we age, it has stopped doing. So I have so many of these because each one sends a different message to your brain. So sometimes you'll see something, the serum that has peptides in it, and it might have um, like a blend or something. This isn't really blended out that way. So each one is individual. This one is elastin. So basically it tells your skin to make more elastin. Um, it's the elastin is like the stretch and the snap back of your skin. Um, you know, so like if you pull it out, how quickly it goes back to place. Then I have a pepti hyaluronic, um, which tells your skin to make more hyaluronic. Um, this is good for people who have too much transepidermal water loss, which is T-E-W-E-L. You sometimes get that by over exfoliating. Um, things like doing too much of the home skin rolling, um, dermal rolling, microneedling, all those kind of things. Um, and all in all, I guess just make your skin plumper and have more moisture. The correct HP, it helps with sunspots and melasma. And um, I probably will go ahead and put over in here other information on each of these. This one is the repair. This one is the one that I use. I don't use this one every single day. I use this every single day after I have done like one of my skin needling um, procedures or if I've done a BB glow which includes some skin needling or if I've done any extra glycolic peels or something that makes your skin need extra repair. It's good for sensitive skin. I don't have sensitive skin, but after any of those treatments, I am sensitive. This one is the Pro Call for Collagen. This one I use every day, um, but it also is great after skin needling or any of the stuff I just talked about. It promotes collagen synthesis. It helps to make sure that the collagen that you have is not accumulating too much in an area that would make a scar look worse than it is. Tone is more like the Botox of the peptides. So it helps with the expression lines um, so that it's more of like a muscle relaxing um, so that you can't make the expression lines so much that they don't get as deep. This one is pad. It's also one of my favorites. Um, so this one restructurizes the fat pad that we have underneath of our skin. So often as we age, we lose the volume in our skin that makes it look plump and that has like the cushion underneath it. You know, things like our upper lip gets longer. <laughs> um, the areas under our eyes get, you know, thinned out you know, our nasal labia areas get thinned out and you need that plumper look. Um, so the pad helps with that one. And then the one that I don't have because I just finished using it last week that I mentioned before in my empties video that I'm actually nervous about because it was also one of my favorites. It is Lift and it basically is supposed to decrease the distance between your cells so that it pulls everything in tighter um, to give your skin a, a tighter look. And then the last one, the Rejuvenator, is the last of my peptides. And this one, the best way to describe it is it's going to be the closest to using like a Retin-A product, a vitamin A product of retinol retinoid, whatever you want to call them, product because it is for skin cell turnover. The reason I like this more than I like Retin-A or any of those products, and I do have prescription from the dermatologist Retin-A. Um, the reason I think this is better is because the idea of all the Retin-A products is it speeds up your cell turnover to reveal healthy, new, younger looking, fresher looking skin 
So the, the rejuvenator, it makes your skin cell turn over, get back to what it should be. So that's what the Retin-A products do is speed it up so that the skin underneath that you're bringing out looks healthier and fresher and younger and um, more glowy, all that good stuff. Okay. Um, the reason I like this one better is because with Retin-A products, over time, over years of using it, I believe you can start telling the people who are overusing it. Um, as you get older and you've been using it for 20 years, 10 years, people start looking like their skin is thin while they might have hardly any wrinkles. I'm only giving you my opinion on why I do the products that I'm using. Okay, so back to the retin -A. Over time, people's skin start looking, looking paper thin, thinned out, um, which also I don't think is the attractive younger look that they're going for, even though they have a lot less wrinkling. Um, because the Retin-A did not stimulate your skin to, to replenish its skin any faster. It just sped up the turnover at the top layers. So this peptide actually tells your skin to also grow underneath to produce more skin so that you don't get the thinned out appearance. I hope that all made good sense too. The other good thing with this product though, some people actually have too much cell turnover, um, which is like then psoriasis. So some people with psoriasis, um, you know, it's, it's building up too quickly, but not exfoliating off. Um, and this actually can be used then for somebody with rosacea or psoriasis, or I use this when I get a sunburn, which, you know, I rarely do. Um, but if I do, I put it right over my sunburn because it also helps with the healing of burns. Um, or even like, um, taking a pan out of the oven and you hit your hand. I, you know, have burned my hand or whatever, and I'll put it on for that too. Okay. See, now I almost want to talk about the other like two products in my Victoria Deanne line just to get that out of the way, but I'm supposed to just be on my skincare. Um, so that was how many products? Hang on. Yeah, about seven or eight serums right there. Um, and yeah, I pretty much put them on every day. And the added part to that is you need to wait like two minutes between each of them, not just like layer them on top of each other. And the reason for that too, is you want to give it time to send the messages to your brain. So they explained it to me. Like if you're trying to listen to two different conversations at the same time, you're only going to pick up parts of both of them. You're not going to listen to them both. So to get the full benefits out of these peptides, because the brain messages, you want to wait at least two minutes between each of them. So usually what I'll do in between there is, um, I have like a lash serum. So I'll do my lash serum between, you know, one of the things sometimes if I'm up running around, I'll actually like, I don't sit in the bathroom ever, you know, and do these things like, and just sit there and wait. I'm either laying in bed because I'm being lazy and I'm doing it between watching other YouTube videos or I'm up and cleaning in the kitchen or whatever and then go and get another peptide and put it on. Um, okay, so I will also use those and in between um, use that kind of as my conductor to do like my microcurrent with. Um, that's usually like if I'm laying in bed being lazy. Um, Okay, let's get to that in a second. So then, after my peptides, I would go to my serums. Now then, if I'm going to do like a sheet mask or something um, that doesn't need to be washed off, I would do that after my peptides to kind of help, you know, just keep that all in. And because I consider a sheet mask like a serum, here's where I've started playing because of everything I get in all these subscription boxes. So, you could just stay down, baby. Two of my favorites are this one from Serum Kind. This one is Youth and Grow, and I don't see it on here, but I remember that it had sea buckthorn oil in it, which sea buckthorn oil, I think, is a great ingredient. When I see it in skincare products, I 
always think they know what they're doing and um, it's something worth looking into. Also this um, rapid collagen infusion one from Murad. I like this one because it does just, I feel like make my skin feel healthy and plump when I've used it. Um, hey BB. The other thing that I would put in there would be this topical C, which is the powder, which again, I don't, I don't like these powdered vitamin C's, but I'm also not going to waste it because I guess I'm cheap enough that I'm going to find a way to use it in my skincare in case it's like a holy grail product and the fountain of youth. I'm going to try it out. Um, so this one, I've got all of these over here that I use. So like this 111 skin that is the pollution defense booster, I will mix it with it um, or, oh, I know what I'm looking for and that's why I like it. I also liked it mixed with the um, that mushroom, snow mushroom serum that I just also finished the bottle of. So that's why I'm thinking, why don't I have this thing? Okay, so I guess now it will either, I'll be mixing this with the, this 111 skin pollution defense or this youth and grow glow energizing radiance. Then I actually would go into about three times a week, I try to do mic microcurrent. I use the Clear Blend Mini. This is a whole other video, so I'm not going to do the whole thing, but it basically is microcurrent that you don't really feel it zapping your skin, but it helps with the muscles underneath. It stimulates them so that they're getting a little workout. Your skin on your face is different than other areas of your body, that the skin on your face is more t attached to the muscles. So giving your face muscles a workout um, actually does make your skin look more youthful because it's attached more. So it does a lifting effect. So when I would do this, like over my lower eyebrow, for instance, I can make that go higher. It doesn't last, you know, more than a few hours during that time, but the accumulative effects builds up over time and helps. So that I try to do at least three times a week. And again, sometimes I use this just as an excuse to, because I do it laying in bed being lazy, I do it as an excuse to go to bed and be lazy. Um, I can sit there and snuggle with my cats. I can sit there with my phone in my hand watching YouTube videos and, you know, do this. And I feel like, you know, I'm exercising my face. And it kind of feels good. It kind of feels like the Wan Shea stones, but okay. Now then, if I'm not using that, or sometimes I have done the two of things at the same time, this is my light sim, my red light therapy. Um, this has a infrared and red lights. This one says to move it like every three minutes. So, you know, I, I do it on my neck. I do it on my chest and it automatically stops after 30 minutes. So I think it, must, it probably came with directions of 10 different areas to use it on. I usually, again, because I'm doing it either when I'm tired in the morning and I really didn't want to get up yet and I don't have to. So I feel like I'm doing something. I've definitely started this and left it in one spot and fallen asleep or fallen asleep like this. Um, you can't get too much of it. It's not going to burn you. It's not like laying in a suntan bed or something. So I can fall asleep on it and leave it in one spot for 30 minutes and it's not going to do anything you know, bad. Um, it's just not going to get the rest of your face. Then I use a moisturizer. My moisturizer also, um, I'm just trying things out from other companies. I don't have a moisturizer that is my ride or die. Um, some of that has to do with because when you have used this rejuvenator for a while, it regulates your skin enough that you don't need moisturizers as much as you used to um, because your skin doesn't dry out as much as it used to because it has regulated your water loss. Um, it has regulated your plumpness. So the moisturizer isn't, you just don't feel as dry. Okay. Um, so Oh, I forgot there's something else I was going to say about the, should I just do that now? Okay. With my microcurrent, you need like a conductive gel um, to use on it. So I use like a collagen gel or a hyaluronic. Um, so let's see, where are they? Okay. So I think it actually came with this one. And this one is just called conductive gel, which is basically 
glycerin and hyaluronic acid and petrified water and DMAE and aloe. Um, I also really like this um, super moisture serum. It's called Hydrate. This is from a company called Tool, which is T-E-U-L, T-U-E-L, T-U-E-L. Um, and it is a hyaluronic acid serum. This is what I did facial massage is on in my facial room. Um, the great thing about using it is it gives you good slip, but even if it starts drying out, you can just like mist it with a little water or in the facial room, I would just take one hand off of their face and dip it in my little water bowl and then start the massage again. Um, so I keep my spritz bottle of water, which this one, you know, I've reused a plastic bottle. This was a reviving hair mist um, from I don't know, 10 years ago because I like the amount of water that spritzes out of it and how fine the mist is. Um, that it works great as a mister for for these things. So if my conductive gel starts drying out, I can just mist it back down with water. Or in the Victoria Deanne line, they have a collagen gel, which also can be a moisturizer. Um, the red light has a photo serum, all of these things you know, probably basically have the same ingredients if I, if I read them um, to you, but oh my gosh, this is going to be such a long and boring video anyway. I'm just going to not read you ingredients of everything. The idea is, um, yeah, that conductive gel, I forgot to mention you need it with the, so this whole pile here was that. Okay, now, now, now we're back to the moisturizers. Right now, these are the moisturizers I'm using. Um, because they were just little samples and I like to try them out and sometimes I've opened a little sample in a video So then I just add it instead of getting all the way through it. So this one was that um, this I don't like the smell of it um, but I think it is it has felt fine on my skin. There's nothing and I don't have a problem with fragrance in products Fragrance does not bother my skin. I don't have sensitive skin um, under a certain percentage if fragrance is under a certain percentage in the ingredients, it doesn't bother most people's skin. Um, there's a very small percentage of people that are actually bothered by fragrances. So I know there's this whole thing on like, don't use fragrance in any of your skincare products. Most people are not gonna be bothered with fragrances. I, I would be fine if they took them away because not everybody likes individual fragrances such as this one, um, but it's not because I don't like fragrances in my skincare. I just, it's this actual scent I don't care for. Um, this one is the Resilience Multi-Effect by Estee Lauder. This one was the Vici, um, I think that was in the Target thing. This Levito Age Away Hydrating Cream. Um, and I also then use this Mud Masky Leave Me On Winter Mask. I use this one more often when I know I'm not going to be putting on makeup anyway, because I do think it's a little bit thick to be putting on under my makeup, but there's lots of days that I don't put on any makeup. So that's what I like this one for. And then this is my SPF and just keeping it real. I don't use it every single day. I think you should. Um, I think if I was a better person, I would, because I do think you should use SPF every single day, but I've just spent all this time doing all these things. And I'm sure this is a more important step to most people. I'm just, I'm not going to be lying and act like I put this on every day. I don't. Um, also, this one that is botanical sunscreen, this one I picked up not too long ago from Marshall's, clearanced out at $3. Um, but I would also see it at, you know, Walgreens for 12 or whatever. It came, I think the first time I tried it was like a sample in one of those like Walmart or tar Target bags. And this one where it says non-greasy, it really is. It definitely leaves me with a more matte feel. And even though I have dry skin, I don't like to feel like a grease ball. And I find that they don't work under makeup as well, the ones that feel greasy. And even that expensive brand, the Kula, um, that a lot of people like, I feel like that leaves me feeling very greasy. And I don't feel like my makeup applies on top of it very well. So um, anyone who wants to listen, I would say Australian Gold, <laughs> um, the 50 broad spectrum. I really enjoy. I also tried it in the 70. Um, that one just left a more of a white cast on afterwards. In fact, um, 
I used it one day when we were going to be like outside swimming and my husband made fun of me basically the whole time because he thought that I looked entirely too white. Much more honestly than I felt like I did. I didn't think it looked that bad, but he carried on. Okay. Um, then just hitting a little bit, um, some of my makeup does have an SPF in it. Um, you know, not enough to necessarily count because you don't use much of it, but, um, I have this one that has a 15. Um, this one, I really liked this, um, and it has a 45, even that pure four in one tinted has a 20 and my Jane Iredell has a 25. So if I put on makeup and I didn't put this on under it, um, my very favorite sunblock that I own is this from Color Science and it is a powder. And I actually have this one in a 30 and a 50 and you can get just like the refill bottoms um, for it so you don't have to buy the whole thing, which makes it a little less expensive overall because it's not a cheap sunblock. But if I take this with me and I'm out all day long at a pool and put this on my face, there's never one time that I've ever burnt where I have burnt if I'm just using um, lotions sitting by a pool all day. And I love that it doesn't make me feel at all greasy. It's not really something that, you know, you see too much of. Um, it's not like it shows up. You can put it on over your makeup because it's, you know, a powder. Um, and I love it. Okay. It's a possibility I should make this two videos. So if I do that, I should put, since this is so long, <laughs> I have just now decided to make this, um, a two part and we'll do our nighttime routine later. Thanks for sticking with me this long though. And, um, Come back if you want to hear the craziness I do at night. <laughs>